So uh, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about curses. And I decided to present this series uh, just because we are approaching Easter where the whole world will be celebrating the death, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So uh, we talked about being redeemed from the curse of the Lord. We talked about redeemed from sicknesses and diseases. And today, I want to talk about redeemed from the curse of poverty. Poverty. Poverty is a curse. And we want to see if what Jesus did for us can guarantee prosperity for us. It is very important to discuss this subject. But there's so much content that I have just selected a few things to present this morning. And I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will get some understanding that will place us in good understanding with the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Poverty is a lack of abundance. It is a lack where you don't have what you need to do what you want to do. And it's kind of repeating itself again and again. Now, it is important to understand that Poverty is a spirit. So it does not matter whether you are earning 100,000, 500,000, or a million dollars a year, you can still be poor. You can be earning 10,000, 20,000, and 50,000 a year, and you'll be very rich. Because poverty is a spiritual entity. So if you understand this, it will help you really connect with God and not be afraid. Of anything that is in this world. Our success and prosperity does not depend on our qualifications. It does not depend on our race. It does not depend on the type of job that you do. If you can understand these things and operate with God. It will take you out of poverty. Hallelujah. Listen to me carefully. So poverty is a state of being extremely poor. It's a state of being inferior in quality or insufficient in amount. And it's a spiritual problem. It is a curse. A curse is a solemn pronouncement on somebody which has a supernatural effect on you. Supernatural in the sense that it is beyond your confines, you cannot handle it. It is pronounced. And until you can connect with that mystery, it does not matter how great you think you are doing stuff. That curse would dismantle every success that you have. Remember Jesus said there was a man who uh, was so successful in life that he gathered all his wealth and abundance of goods and he put it in a barn and then he went to sleep and said hey you know what I've got so much and Jesus said thou fool today your life is required of you so success is a mystery uh, uh, poverty is a mystery if that curse is hanging over, over your life it has its timing and choosing so you might be doing very well today but tomorrow Everything might go down south. These are the phenomenon that we want to examine through the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. And curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. And cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. 
Remember, we have seen so far that the curse came upon the human race because of disobedience. So this is what happens. Okay? It was a whole lot of things, and poverty is part of it if you disobey the commandments of God. And this is just something just to capture our imagination and thoughts and bring us in to, the, to the table to have dialogue with God. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 38 to 41. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but neither but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Thou shalt have holy trees throughout all thy coast. But thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine only shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So this is also a curse. Poverty, I mean, it can deprive you of so many things, including your children. That is what the Bible is teaching us. It is very important to pay attention to these things. But you have to understand that Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So we want to see how we can position ourselves so that these curses will be broken if there is any existing in our lives today. Amen. Can you give me some volume? I, I, I don't know. It looks like I'm having to scream too much. God intends to bless his children if they obey his commandments. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, it reads, And it shall come to pass. Okay? It's important to pay attention to that phrase. And it shall come to pass. That means that if you begin to do the right things, eventually you will begin to see the positive results that you desire. For instance, when God called Abraham, listen to me, he told him that you're going to have so many children, okay? But then he said that there will come a time that they will, be, they will become slaves for 430 years. After that, they will be delivered with a great and mighty hand, Okay? So for those 430 years, we know that the Israelites were in Egypt under bondage. And so we see some, you know, specks of light here and there. For instance, Moses, when you read the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that he was in the house of Pharaoh, but he decided not to enjoy the pleasures of the king. He decided to identify with the suffering of the people of Israel because he was able to see in the distance through the grace of God that there is coming a savior hallelujah and so when you walk with God remember this phrase and it shall come to pass hallelujah I want to assure you that if you apply the principles that the Bible teaches it shall come to pass in other words God has a time for everything Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If, that is conditional, okay? It is conditional. If, Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. 
They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In other words, your land can be the profession that you are engaged in. Okay? You can be a doctor. You can be an engineer. You can be a CNA. You can be uh, uh, whatever field that God has planted in you. Planted you into. Okay? You can prosper. You can prosper. Because if you obey the principles, God knows how to promote. Hallelujah. He knows how to promote. You see, there is God's economy and there is the system of the world. You know, sometimes it doesn't make sense when you think of the fact that the president of the United States gets to be paid about $400,000 a year. But the one who is playing basketball, okay, can be paid $20 million a year. It doesn't make sense. But we support this and we, 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 we encourage it. Okay, that is the system of man. And we accept it. But when it comes to the things of the kingdom of heaven, people reject it outright because what? You think that you are so smart. But if you follow the principles of God, things that don't make sense because God is a mystery. Hallelujah. That's one word I've come to appreciate nowadays. God is a mystery. If you follow God's commandments, things mysteriously will begin to align and, 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 and work out in your favor. And it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Where was I? <laughs> Verse 9. Okay. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee. Okay. Take note of the word establish. Okay. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And, shall, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Hallelujah. God has got a good treasure. The heavens to give the rain unto the, thy land in his season. So you can see that the Bible is even letting you know that it is the spirit well that influences the natural well. And so from God's storehouse in heaven, when he opens it, there is nothing that can stop your blessing. Hallelujah. So it says, the rain will come unto thy land in what? His season. So there is a time for everything. And to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head. And not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God. Which I command thee this day. To observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside. Okay. Thou shalt not go aside from any of the words. Which I command thee this day. To the right or to the left. To go after other gods. To serve them. The other gods in this context. Is going to be the ideas and the wisdom. Of the world in which we live. Because those are the things that compete. With the word of God. And if you decide to go with the wisdom of the world. Because it appeals to you. Stronger than the word of God. That means that your foundation. Is shaken. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Verse 29. Oh. Oh the word oh is an emotional word. It is like somebody, you're talking to somebody, and the person has done some, either it's a good thing or a bad thing. I said, oh, you, why did you do this? Oh, it is an emotion. God is saying, oh, God, there is some yearning in God's heart towards us. He says that, oh, that there was such an heart in them. What kind of heart do you have? A heart of stone that rejects God's word, bounces God's word. Or do you have that heart of flesh? Okay, that's what we are told in the book of Ezekiel. That if you accept the Lord, God gives you a heart of flesh. 
He takes away the heart of stone. So that now you are receptive. You want to receive God's word. You want to obey it. So he says, oh, that there was such an heart in them. That they will fear me. And keep all my commandments always. That it might be well with them. And with their children forever. Hallelujah. That it might be well with them. And with what? Their children forever. That is also revealing to us that a blessing can pass on from one generation to the next. And the curse can also come from one generation to the other one. If you do it right now. If we, if we as parents and families right now begin to do the right things. Our sons and daughters, it will be well with them. When we are dead and gone and Christ has not returned, you need not worry. We shall be watching from the heaven stands and, and congratulating and encouraging them. They will be doing the right thing. Train up a child the way he should go. And when he is grown up, he will not depart from it. Hallelujah. So that should be the place where we, we stand strong and, and come before the Father. And say, let this word be fulfilled in the life of my children. Hallelujah. Because children sometimes can be foolish. And they want to go away from the teachings that their parents are giving them. That is the work of the enemy. But if we stand with God and believe, the day will come and it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. So oh is an exclamation. It's, it's just a, it is an emotional you know, expression. So God is saying, oh my God. I'm just, you know, I, I just want you. I just want you to understand that what I'm telling you is so real. So apply yourself to it. So I want to teach you today four laws. There are so many things in the Bible that I can talk about prosperity and how to avoid the poverty. But I've chosen four things. There's four things. There are so many, but four things. Of course, there are so many things that we've seen in the church world. In the last decade or two. About people coming. Supposedly in the name of God. To be a blessing to us. Okay. So they will tell you. Come and put down $200. $1,000. Etc. Etc. That if you do this. God will bless you. The principle is right. But I think the motive is wrong. And I want us to go about these things the right way. Hallelujah. So I want to teach you four laws. Four things. Because of our time. Please take them seriously. Number one, you must walk in love. People don't have any idea that love can get you out of poverty. Okay? But love is so important. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. Bible says, Oh, no man what? Anything. But to love one another. For he that loveth another has what? Fulfilled the law. So you see that the Ten Commandments and all those commandments that was given in the Old Testament, nobody could obey it. Everybody failed. But under the New Testament and under the grace of God, if you apply this law, you have fulfilled all the law that was in the Old Testament. If you walk in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those of you who hate each other, insult each other, and cannot forgive, you are blocking your blessing. And you are blocking the blessing for your children. Remember, the fact that you have something in your pocket now doesn't mean that it is going to be always fine for you or your children. And so you are sticking to all your, your, your ways that you think are perfect. Because remember, it is a supernatural curse that can come upon you. You don't choose the time and season. So you can be going well for 10 years, the 11th year. And then things will begin to just be so bad and you wonder, what in the world went wrong with me? So anybody who loves has fulfilled the law. Verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Hallelujah. When you walk in love, you have fulfilled everything. God checks all the boxes of the Old Testament. Thou shalt love the law, thy God, with all your heart. And you love your neighbor as yourself. That is why I keep saying this all the time. If we don't walk in love, our prayers are hindered. If we don't walk in love, it destroys so many things. The curse will begin to have access into our affairs. And so God is saying here, you know, adultery, false witness, all those things can happen. But if the person is repentant, forgive and walk in love. Let it be. Walking in love means that it is as if the person never did anything like that. That is how God expects us to love. But if you cannot do that, you are not fulfilling the law. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. <laughs> Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor, what? As thyself. Okay? But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. So if you are constantly creating chaos in your home and, and, and in relationships, be careful because you are going to destroy that person and you will destroy yourself. Hallelujah. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the lust of the flesh is all of this, you know, agitation, antagonisms, and hatred, and bitterness, and all those kind of, is the work of the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, guess what? You walk in love. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh what? Love. Okay? If somebody does something against you, and you can forgive, you cover it. It's as if it never happened. He says, but he that repeated a matter separated very friends. Okay? So it is important to walk in love. I cannot overemphasize this. If you want to get out of poverty, this must be your number one rule. Somebody may be thinking, oh, this is, this is nothing. But be very careful. When the curse is lingering over your life, you don't know when it's going to start to take effect. So don't think that because things are cozy with you now, everything is going to be like that all the time. And remember, the curse can come not only on you, but on your children. So that is point number one. One law that you need to follow. Walk in love. Number two, honor the Lord with thy stuff, substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. And ten, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. This is something which people struggle with. They don't know how to honor the Lord with their substance. Okay? They don't want to give. Sometimes, <laughs> because of what pastors have done or whatever reasons, people are reluctant to give. But when you are giving, don't think that you are giving it to the pastor. Okay? Honor the Lord. It says, verse 10, So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That is very clear. If you do it right, if you honor the Lord, okay? To honor the Lord, Let's look at Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. What it means to honor the Lord. To honor the Lord means that you have come to a place where you can behave like this scripture is saying. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive. Okay, I want you to underline the word receive. He is worthy to what? Receive. Okay, <laughs> where did you receive glory and honor and power? For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So if you have something in your hand, 
Don't think that it is just yours. It is God who gave it to you. So if you are honoring the Lord, you are declaring that he's worthy to receive it. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Again, what? To receive. Okay? God is worthy to receive. Power and riches. He's worthy to receive power and what? And riches. Remember when Jesus was born, the wise men who came, what did they do? They brought riches. He's worthy to what? Receive what? Riches. And the land that were received. Honor the Lord with your substance, children of God. Riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I'm not going to say more than this. Think about it. Point number three. I'm talking about some laws that I believe that when you follow them, you are not going to walk in poverty. You come out of it and it's going to be well with you the rest of your life. Your children and your children's children. Number three. Remember the source of your prosperity. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee what power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers. As it is this day. Remember. The word remember means to recall. Bring to mind. So anytime substance comes into your hands. Remember. Anytime you are paid, remember the Lord. Every time good things come to you, remember the Lord. Some people, when they get paid, they don't remember the Lord. The Lord becomes the last thing on their minds. Because you are so much concerned about your debtors and all those other things. You have forgotten that it is the Lord who gives you power to get wealth. If you continue that kind of thought, that thinking, and repeat it over and over and you will never come out of poverty. You will never. You will never come out of poverty. Okay? All right. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. And without what? Contradiction. Okay? To contradict, that means you can't say something that is other than just the truth. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of what? The better. Between you and Christ, you and God, who is greater? Who? Okay, so Christ is the one who can bless your life. He is the one who can set things straight. So we know there is no contradiction. There is no fight about that. There is no argument about that. That is why people, I mean, when they are, excuse me to use the word, tricked. Because it is not presented in the right way. So we come to think that you can just buy God by sowing a seed. All other areas of life, your life, you don't talk about it. Okay? You still hate people. You don't love. And all those things. And you go and sow a thousand dollars. And you want God to bless you. No, no, no. It does not happen like that. The fact that you have sown doesn't mean that it, God is obligated. But when you walk in love. And you're honoring the Lord with your substance. Walking in love. I mean, things begin to work for you. Hallelujah. Because the better who is Christ is the one who will bless you. Verse 8. And here, men that die receive tithes. Okay. This is uh, talking about on earth. Remember the Old Testament. How the priests. We will receive tithes from the citizens. Okay? It says here on earth, that's what was happening. But there, where is there? There is talking about heaven. Okay? But there he receiveth them. In heaven, in the spirit realm, there is somebody who is receiving, of whom it is witness that what? He liveth. Christ is alive. You better understand that. He's not dead. Jesus is alive. So when you give offerings and tithes, know that you are giving to a living person, a living being. He sees everything. 
Hallelujah. Remember Jesus was sitting in the treasury. Rich people were coming. They were putting their offerings in the offering bowl. And there comes this woman. And she gets, gave two pennies or something like that. And Jesus passed a comment and said, Hey, look, all these people, they are giving out of their abundance. But the greatest person who has given here today is this woman who gave two pence. Do you know what that means? Sometimes we misunderstand what Jesus said. Jesus is trying to say that to give to God will cost you. It will cost you. That woman, that's all she had. And she gave. Okay? So giving will cost you. If you have $100 in your pocket and you give God $1, you are not, it is not costing you anything. At least God is saying that bring in at least a 10%. Hallelujah. I leave you. You know, you see, the word of God is the word of God. I, I cannot preach anything other than the word of God. So you, you deal with the information. Hallelujah. The fourth law that I want to present to us this morning is the fear of God. The fear of God is something which has been so watered down. <laughs> to fear God has to be a specific posture you have in your heart and in your mind. It is one of all and reverence and submission to deity. This God that you don't see with your eye, you have some respect for him. And so every time that you hear God's word, it's like, oh, I need to do something about this. And you're asking God for strength to help you to fulfill it. The fear of God. Okay? You don't come to church because you want to appear to be a Christian. Come to church because you fear God. Don't give your offering because you want to appear to be doing the right thing. Give it because you fear God. Hallelujah. Give because you fear God. It all comes back to what happened in the beginning. Obey, right? Obedience. Psalm 112, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth what? Greatly in his commandments. The question is, do you delight greatly in the commandments of God? Then you are blessed. Okay, to delight greatly doesn't mean you are just smiling when you hear the word of God preach or when you read it. But it is actually the delight. Remember Psalm 1. Bless the man who walks not in the counsel, the advice of the ungodly. But his delight is in the fear of the Lord. In the Lord, he meditates day and night. He says, observe that kind of person. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of, Lord, of water that bear fruit in their season. Once again, it shall come to pass. If you do the right thing, it shall come to pass. Let us not be instant consumers. Thinking that you just do this and God is obligated to do that. Continue to serve the Lord faithfully. And he who knows our heart will bless us in due time. Hallelujah. So praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord. That delights greatly in his commandments. Number two. His seed. That is his children. His or his children, whatever it is, shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And so if we, the first generation that have come to America, settled here, and God is working through us, we can be assured, if we do it right, that our children are definitely going to be better than us. Hallelujah. And that is what we want to see. It will be better for them than our condition. But we must set the foundation right for them. If we don't do it right, the curse will go down to them. And so, he see it shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. Is this the word of God I'm reading? 
Are these my words? This is God speaking to us. So how can we just shut off our heart and our minds to these glorious and beautiful promises? Wealth and riches shall be in his house. So these are the things that we can just open the Bible and begin to talk to God and say, God, hey, you know I fear you in my heart and I desire you. I, I love your way. I, 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 I've been doing my best to serve you this and that. And this is your promise. You say, my children will be mighty. I thank you, oh God, that my children are mighty on this earth. It doesn't matter what you see with your eyes happening on the ground right now. But just go ahead and make those confessions over your children. And say, Father, I thank you that my children are mighty on this earth. My next generation, they are blessed, oh God. I thank you for wealth and riches, oh God. You said it will be abundant in my house. I rejoice in this and I give you thanks. Watch what God will do. God is a mystery. Hallelujah. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Unto the upright, there what ariseth light in the darkness. Hmm? The light will rise over you to shine. You, you, you will find that you begin to shine. Something will begin to happen. That is the mystery of God. So unto the right, right, there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious. Okay? Another uh, interpretation of that is that he is what? Generous. The righteous person is what? Generous. He likes to give. Okay? And full of what? Compassion. And righteous. Ah! All these things will make you prosper in the Lord. Because Jesus has now taken the curse away. And so when we begin to practice and walk in love, when we honor the Lord with our substances, when, what was the third thing? When we remember the source of our prosperity. Okay? And when we fear the Lord, there is no way that we will live in lack. There is no way we will be destitute. God will make sure. Remember, it is not the position that you occupy that will make you prosper. It is how you relate to God that will determine your next level. Hallelujah. Finally, I want to just say this from 1 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 9. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. What does that mean? The things that you have heard today, okay, don't discard them. Don't, don't throw away the information. Try, that's why we encourage you to go back and listen to the message. Try to get the key points, the important points. It's good to even have a notebook to document some things that are meaningful to you. They become prayer points that you have with God. It says, hold that mystery of the faith. The thing that we have said today from the word of God is a mystery. Okay? It's a mystery. Hold it in a pure conscience. In other words, you have no way to dismiss the information. You believe it. If you don't believe it, that means that everything's out of the window. Verse 16. And without what? Controversy. The word controversy means that there is no opposing view. There is no other argument. And without controversy, great is the what? Mystery of godliness. Okay? It's a mystery. God is a mystery. God was manifest in the flesh. Remember, God is spirit. But spirit immediately became flesh that you can see with our eyes. How did that happen? The Bible says that it happened because a virgin was conceived. And how did that happen? It is a mystery. But was the spirit of the Lord came upon the woman. And she conceived. And so when you believe the word of God and you walk with it. 
How are things going to come to pass in your life? That Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit will come upon your life, on your household, and begin to make things form so that you can birth the outcomes that you desire. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. That means without the Holy Spirit, things cannot happen. That's what I'm telling you. If you begin to practice it, the spirit will take action. Because now God is going to look at you and say, Oh my, this is my daughter. This is my son. I can see his heart, her heart. Oh yeah, now I can see they're applying the principles. Okay, Holy Ghost, uh, let the things happen. And the Holy Ghost is going to move in your situation. And then you're going to find that things that was in the spirit now begin to manifest in the flesh. And now you see with your eyes happening. Hallelujah. He was preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hallelujah. I pray that God will bless you. Let us pray. Father, we want to exalt your name and give you glory. We thank you for your goodness, O oh Lord, the blessings that you've showered upon us. That we can say that everything that we are, that we have, you have given us, O oh Lord, so we will bless you. And even as we leave your presence, Lord, we know that your presence is still with us. So we are calling on you to direct our paths, O oh Lord, to the right places as we move on. And let the beauty of you, O oh Lord, be upon us and establish the works of our hands in all things. Lord, again, establish the works of our hands. We pray the Lord you be a sun and a shield for us, O oh Lord, that you be our protector, the protector of our health and everything that you've made a steward of, O oh Lord. We call on you, O oh Lord, to protect them. We ask for the grace, O oh Lord, and the glory. And we ask that no good thing should be withheld from us, O oh Lord. Help us to walk mightily in you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share the grace. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, mercy and goodness shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. We shall live and not die, but declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen and amen. You reign, you are ancient, so you are God.